As it marks its 25th anniversary, Rakuten's theme for 2022 is tech and green. Rakuten has its sights set on making this one of the biggest years ever for focusing on the potential of technology. In part 1, Tarek shared his vision for Rakuten Mobile. In part 2, we will talk about what Rakuten Symphony is hoping to achieve in the global mobile industry, find out why now is an exciting time for engineers to join the mobile industry, and hear Tarek's advice on how to grow one's career. Um, so, let's talk a little bit about Rakuten Symphony now. I think we've actually kind of mentioned it already, but um, behind Rakuten Mobile lies a powerful orchestra of hardware and software services and solutions, which is aptly called Rakuten Symphony. Um, so this company brings together all of Rakuten's telecom solutions under one umbrella. So what is it what is Rakuten Symphony um, exactly hoping to achieve? Well, first of all, I think maybe we haven't explained to a lot of people, why did we call it Symphony? You know, and I, and I uh, really, um, um, we, we had a, a discussion with Mickey. Uh, I credit him for coming up with the great branding for um, um, the, the, the company. But if you really go and watch an orchestra, you'll discover um, a beautiful tune could be played if the maestro is harmonizing all the key musician to a single tune. So it's about orchestration. It's about uh, harmony. And if, if the orchestra was well rehearsed, well practiced, nothing sound better in my opinion than, a, than that symphony. So symphony now in terms of software is the same thing. We are a platform company. We are not a hardware company. Symphony was created to take all the lessons learned from Rocket and Mobile, hmm. to understand how do we build a cloud architecture that is highly scalable, that's distributed, and has the largest edge platforms in Japan, to build this open RAN, to build the automation system around open RAN, and to enable billing and other things to come really as a one symphony, if you will, one orchestrated uh, uh, software platforms to deliver on amazing productivity, efficiency, and cost reduction. So, um, I mean, just think about it. We were building Rocket and Mobile, and in the background, I was thinking about, you know, it would be a shame if we don't take Rocket and Mobile and globalize this to the rest of the world. So, um, while Mobile was being built, um, I was really trying to conceptualize how we build a platform company. And to a certain extent, they run in parallel. Mm. So, um, uh, you know, we decided that we're going to uh, really commence into uh, the idea of build uh, where it's possible in-house, acquire talented startups and start to accumulate, you know, the, you know the, this orchestra and put it very nicely together. So we acquired a cloud company, we acquired an OSS company, we've acquired a, uh, you know, a very nice cloud storage company. We've acquired uh, um, an in integrated a billing company into Symphony, and all of a sudden they became unified under this one idea of a true cloud connectivity platform. Its mission is simple. Rakuten Mobile mission was to democratize mobile industry in Japan. Rakuten Symphony mission is to democratize telecom industry globally. So they have a very very unified mission. And it always, in my opinion, starts with Japan because it gives us the opportunity to test, validate, and hypothesize the, our assumption in Japan, meet the quality here, then globalize, go to global market, and enable Rocket and to really achieve its bigger goals and objective to become a true large global uh, platform provider. Um, that is fantastic. So, as the maestro of Rakuten Symphony, how hard has it hit, um, or how difficult has it been for you to assemble a new future-proof team? Well, look, I, I mean, to be truthful with you, uh, maybe this might not make a lot of sense. Mobile is slightly easier. In mobile, uh, we brought everybody to Japan. Everybody was here. Mm -hmm. We were here. 
uh, you know, that this uh, we were unified under one roof. Uh, we worked tirelessly day in and day out from the same location. So in a way, despite all the challenges in mobile, I thought overcoming these challenges are relatively easier, just partially of the way how we communicated, how we are integrated, and how the Rakuten culture from day zero was embedded on how we ran Rakuten Mobile. Mm. Now, Symphony has uh, pragmatic challenges. The Symphony challenge is not about the quality of software that Symphony has, but Symphony pragmatic challenges is how do you take this amazing startup environment that are distributed in 13 countries <laughs> and unify them under one common goals and objective. So uh, as a CEO of Rocket and Symphony, maybe my most difficult job now this, uh, you know, going through four acquisitions and to do something called post merger integration for me is actually the biggest lessons learned as a CEO. It is not just about changing someone's email, by the way, to say mm -hmm. now your email had changed your rocket and but it's much more than that. There's a lot of uh, unification that needs to happen. There's mm -hmm. a lot more of explanation about racket and way of doing things. Um, and it is not, I can't force people. They have to buy into this vision. Otherwise they will not believe on where we need to, to go. And, and the challenges become much more difficult for me to solve. So mm. to a certain extent, Symphony challenges is not about software technology. Sif Symphony challenges is about integration and scaling the team for delivery, which is a lot different than I think in the mobile side. And um, so hopefully you will see, I mean, we, we finally have a leadership summit of Symphony. We invited a hundred leaders from all over the world to come to Japan for the first time. This is what we call the unification journey. Unify mm -hmm. everybody while still celebrating our diversity um, to achieve common goals and objective uh, to expand Symphony outside of Japan. So we've talked about the business, the technologies, the strategies. Let's talk, um, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the people behind these mm. efforts. Um, you've mentioned before that Rakuten Symphony and Rakuten Mobile um, are built on people culture. Why is it an exciting time for engineers to join uh, Rakuten Mobile and Rakuten Symphony right now? Well, I mean, I think uh, in terms of uh, people, you know, we, we all understand that there is no business that could succeed without having the right foundation. You know, the, uh, for me personally, traveling across the world and living into different countries have really opened my eye and I truly, truly believe that the power of any organization revolves from understanding the power of diversity. We are at our best when we mix cultures. Now, many people miss this point. They don't really understand uh, how to deal with diverse culture, multicultural organization. But I think in Rakuten, we really embrace this. They're living in Tokyo as a local uh, employee of Japan, not just as someone, hey, come here as an expat and just spend a little bit of time. They're working and it got integrating properly, meaning local employees of Japan, as well as foreign employees that we brought. And uh, that to me is really, really exciting. So people that want to come to Rakuten and Mobile, the first thing that you'll notice, it is like United Nations, <laughs> you know? So um, uh, definitely there are gonna be some challenges in the early on to, you know, whether it is simple things like communication, mm. understanding the culture. Um, in fact, as we asked for English being the language of choice in Rakuten, I've been really advocating for foreign employees and advising them that it's also a good idea for you to learn Japanese. Mm. So this way you guys could start getting unified, you meet in the middle, you, sh you put a bit of effort and understand that you have respect to the culture that you're in. And uh, you know what I see now in Racket and Mobile is just a really amazing uh, harmony that already exists between local Japanese employees, foreign employees, all working towards common goals and objective. And we see the results of this uh, highly diverse organization on how we run the business and deliver results. That's wonderful. So what kind of technologies do you think these engineers can become involved in? Um, and you know, what kind of things can they create? Or what kind of career do you think they can follow? Well, firstly, I mean, I, I tell you, the, the world is a limit. We are involved in everything from chipset, component level design, all the way to the higher layers of software and application. So people that like really hardware engineering, component design, they could really enjoy the disruption that we're bringing around uh, products 
whether we're building products for radio access or building products for mobile devices or products for consumer as a CPE uh, and a uh, product like CASA that we have built. These were all built by our team in Rocket and Mobile. It's not just simply going to a partner and ask him to build a product. Reference design, hardware was created by us. So we have a very nice hardware development organization that is focused on disruption of the hardware platform, its cost structure, and optimizing the platform to meet the quality of, of uh, Japan, both on uh, consumer side as well as enterprise. So for those that like that, we have an amazing opportunities in that. For those that enjoy software, you know, we have just remarkable software development organization and every facet of software. Whether it is you want to learn new modern age skills as an AI, new architecture for data lake, new architecture for modern uh, programming languages, almost everything is covered into that. We also have amazing UX experience team. We, we build and design our UX platforms for Racket and Symphony is just remarkable. So um, really I would say that the world is a limit. Um, we have quite a bit of job opportunities, not only just by the way on technology aspect, but uh, whether people like the marketing side, sales side, uh, IP patent, legal, it's a really exciting time to be part of this organization. Because we can you know, develop a lot of new things, right? Correct. Um, that, is, that sounds fantastic. Um, so while we're doing a lot of new innovation, I think for some of the engineers, there's a lot, also a lot of ma what we, we, we would call maintenance work or um, routine work. Um, and it might not sound as innovative or exciting. So what kind of advice would you give to these kind of well, people? Well, quite the contrary, actually. Maintenance in Rakuten is not the same maintenance somewhere else. So I think uh, maybe operations is misunderstood because operation might not sound, for some, very attractive. But operation in Rakuten Mobile, if you discuss this with a head of operation, you know, and ask him what is Tarek tells you all the time about how we run operation. For me, rather than just monitoring uh, these alarms of yellow, green, red, the new age of people that run operations, I would love nothing for them but to actually be competent on writing the code that would allow this network to be more resilient and uh, more reliable than what it is now. So it is much bigger than the operations of the past or what is called maintenance. This maintenance in Rocket and Mobile is actually, in my opinion, one of the exciting jobs that we have because you'll be able to change the destiny of how we manage a highly scalable network, how we meet the reliability of now a growing almost six million customers in this network, how do we deliver on reliable services, but we don't do it in a traditional way. Most of this network is anyway software. If you don't know software, I think you will struggle to be part of the operation team in Rocket and Mobile. Always improve, always advance. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, so what is the biggest shift in people skills and talent looking to work in telco? Well, I mean, in, in our case, uh, we already have cleared the big hurdle. The big hurdle for us is the investment that we had to do on uh, software. So the foundation of our organization, quite a bit of skill sets must, must understand software. And, and honestly, people that would struggle to understand software um, might not have a really good chance to advance their career in the future. If you look at telco ac across the world, mm. the biggest struggle that they have to do is their organization. They don't have enough skilled people that have the right skills on software development and also not enough knowledge about cloud. Makes it very, very difficult for them to take themselves and transform themselves from where they are to where they need to be. Where they need to be meaning the blueprint of Rocket and Mobile. So in our case, I think we have invested heavily, heavily into um, you know, growing the right organization. We now are approximately 3,300 software developers. Can you imagine this? Just remarkable. I mean, what an asset now that we have and we own. And these are the people that are really helping to write all of the automation framework, the new data lake architecture, the AI framework that is running Rocket and Mobile. So this is where I think the future is all about. It is all about AI, it's all about uh, software, and it is, of course, all about the cloud architecture uh, skills that, that one needs to have in order to compete for the jobs of the future. Thank you so much. I think everybody ha now has a clearer idea of um, what kind of exciting 
time it is for um, employees at Racton Mobile and Racton Symphony. 